all the time. Number five. I don't dance now, I make money moves. There were a lot of trap songs this year. And uh, it's not my genre. I don't really get it. But I don't put things on my worst list because I don't get them. Not getting it is a different feeling from not liking it. Or at least it is for me. But it feels like it wouldn't be honest if I didn't put at least one trap song on here. And fortunately, right at the end of the year, the chart spat out a song that even a clueless idiot like myself can tell how shit it is. Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang. Gucci gang. Spread their rats on new chain. This is Gucci Gang by Lil Pump. I don't know a thing about Lil Pump, except he's from Miami, he looks like a forgotten Suicide Squad character, and he has a terrible rap name. I don't know why you would give yourself a name that's literally a synonym for small dick. Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang. Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang. I would call this song one of the most obnoxiously repetitive songs I ever heard, except for the fact that it's only a blessedly short two minutes long. My morning pee takes longer than this song fragment. But what's more important is that it's not even an original repetitive song fragment. Oh yes, this was a banner year for Migos, who were all over everything. But they also got ripped off so hard by so many mumbling dumbasses in 2017 that they should just consider suing the year. The actual entire year. And few were as blatant about it as Lil Pump. He literally just changed which designer he was rapping about. That's all he did. He stole their flow, he stole their hook, he even stole their sound effects. I'm not even a huge fan of Migos, but they're allowed to do this. That's their thing that they came up with. And it's not like Lil Pump ups the lyricism on his one verse. Yes, count it. One, single, lone, solitary verse. None of this shit be new to me. Nope. Fuck them all, teach call to the read. Yeah. What? Why would I call it that? Okay, Rap Genius tells me that it's short for statutory. I guess Lil Pump is bragging that his teacher raped him, and that he doesn't know how statutory is pronounced. What's the opposite of wordplay? Seriously, what distinguishes this guy from a billion other SoundCloud rappers? Is this all there is to it? I'm starting to get the feeling that trap music is so popular right now not because people like it, but because it's so absurdly easy to make. Can anyone do this? You just, just say a random word over and over again. Waffle iron, waffle iron, waffle iron, waffle iron. Waffle iron, waffle iron, waffle iron, waffle iron. Buffalo, 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 buffalo. All the time. Number four. Most popular song of the year. Thanks, America. I'm in love with the shape of you. We push and pull like a magnet. Do. When I first reviewed this song, I think I might have given the impression that I dislike Ed Sheeran singing about sex because he's unattractive. That's not why. The entire history of popular music has been an uninterrupted streak of ugly guys pretending to be studs. It's not that he's unattractive. I'm not even sure he is unattractive. If you go to the movies right now, apparently the hottest guys that all the girls are crazing over are a freaky looking pockmark emo douche and a goddamn fish man. And honestly, I do kind of get it for both of them. So, so what if Ed Sheeran looks like a life-size Cabbage Patch doll? Lots of guys have done well with a lot less than what Ed has. The problem is that he's so incapable of projecting anything but perpetual virginity. I'm in love with the shape of you. Ed Sheeran sounds like acne. Ed Sheeran sings about sex like he'd rather be playing D&D. We've reached the point where Charlie Puth, Charlie goddamn Puth, has managed to convey more heat. It's not like the rest of the song communicates it either. The entire production of this song baffles me. What part of this song is supposed to be sexy? The plinkety plonk beat? The monk chanting? Ed's wispy British accent? All I can think of when I hear this song is Ed Sheeran rubbing his face into his sheet so he can sniff his own love stank still on it. That's your hot sex jam of 2017. Jesus Christ, it's a wonder anyone got laid this year. I'm in love with the shape of you And all the time Number three Speaking of bad sex songs Body like a back road Driving with my eyes closed I know every curve Like the back of my hand 2017 was a great year for walking testicle Sam Hunt Who had a monster country hit with Body like a back road How big? 
Well, it was only the longest running number one country single of all time. Of all time! Eat that, Merle Haggard! Got a girl from the south side, got braids in her hair. Well, at the very least, unlike Ed Sheeran, I believe Sam Hunt knows what sex is. In fact, I'm fairly certain he's thinking about either tits or beer at any given moment. So why does this rank higher than Ed Sheeran? At least Sam Hunt is authoritatively stupid and gross, right? Well, I can tell you why. This is the worst song because I absolutely cannot get it out of my fucking head. It is one of the most insidious, brain-destroying choruses I've ever heard. Putting on my shoes now to God, God damn it! Wasting time on Facebook, wasting time. <laughs> Like, even ignoring the lyrics, this is an annoying song. Got hips like honey, so thick and so sweet. The idea of anyone getting turned on by this meathead telling them their hips are thick and sweet. Just why? Why? If there is one positive thing I can say about this song, it's this. It's possibly so successful that Sam Hunt has decided that he can retire on it and never record again. On a highway to heaven. It's entirely possible. That song came out 11 months ago, and Sam Hunt has yet to release a follow-up, or announce a release date for his next album, or even a title for it. Maybe the guy's just done. Maybe he's racked with writer's block trying to recapture the glory of Body Like a Back Road. Hey, hey Sam, if you're listening, here are some ideas I'm spitballing out that would match the irresistible southern charm of Body Like a Back Road. Ahem. Ass like a refrigerator. Sexy as an abandoned Walmart. I literally tried to fuck a tractor this one time. Tried to fuck a tractor. Banged it in the backyard. God, that's gonna be in my head now. All time. Number two. Now, as most of you know, I am not good at predictions. I get very many things wrong. I tried to play it safe in 2017 and predict things that were pretty much guaranteed to happen, like La La Land winning Best Picture, Falcons winning the Super Bowl after going 25 points ahead, a Republican winning in Alabama. Yeah, this has been a rough year for old Todd or Damas. So, uh, I'd just like to highlight the one prediction I got right from back in 2012. This is where Taylor Swift started. He said the way my blue eyes shine. And this is where she is now. I remember when we broke up. And I can only assume this is what she'll sound like in the future. Who called it? This was a year of many tragic deaths. We lost many dearly beloved artists in 2017. But the most tragic death this year was old Taylor Swift who was brutally murdered by a confused psychopath who makes terrible music. I'm not always the most up-to-the-minute reviewer, but one of the real joys I had in music this year was watching the awfulness of this song break the internet in real time. And even months later, we're all still reeling from the disaster, trying to put together how the most self-conscious artist of our time made the least self-aware song of the decade. Now, I've already detailed the years-long feud with Kanye, but I think the bigger guide to what happened can be found from a little song she released back in 2010. See, this was her first anti-hater song, framed as a simple song about bullying. In it, she pretty clearly details her ambitions. Someday I'll be living in a big old city and look where she was just a few years later. But more importantly, that song tells us why she wanted to be in a big old city. Oh, honey. Oh, no. The fact that Taylor thought no one was going to hurt her if she got big and famous enough that's just a Shakespearean tragedy. No wonder she went insane. I don't trust nobody and nobody trusts me. This is not the first Taylor Swift song where she revels in her pop star image, but it's the first time where she doesn't seem like she's enjoying it. Taylor Swift has received a lot of abuse from a lot of people, 
and I've always suspected most of it was unfair, but hearing this song was the first time I really believed everything bad I've ever heard about her. Not because she's willingly playing the villain, but because she unintentionally reveals herself to be confused, defensive, and insecure, just like any actual bully. This is Taylor Swift proudly showing off her burn book and expecting us to be impressed. Yeah, no. Is there any upside? Maybe. Get the feeling we'll never see another song about her haters. Because as the video shows, she hasn't really thought about anyone but Taylor Swift for a long ass time. What you just made me do, look what you just made me do. And now before we get to number one, let's look at a few of the songs that deserve dishonorable mentions. I don't wanna be alive. I don't wanna be alive. I was complaining about how pop music seemed to be disconnected from the zeitgeist. But you know what? After 10 months of this miserable year, the number for the National Suicide Hotline was one of the biggest hits in the country. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. I got a lot of people saying that this was their worst song of the year, but except for an amazingly misconceived two seconds, I didn't think it was that bad. As always, I'm kinder to songs with good intentions, and if it does some good, I'm not gonna complain. But oh man, did Logic find the quickest possible way to show that he didn't have a clue what he was talking about? in just four amazing words. Feel like my life ain't mine. Who can relate? Woo! Who can relate? Woo! All my ladies with suicidal depression say hey! And all my fellas who have self-endangering mood disorder say ho! When I say self, you say harm! Cause I got issues. Sucks. Here's another song that's not necessarily the worst ever, but has a truly woeful two seconds. You already know what I'm talking about. Okay, dirty laundry usually means dirty secrets, but that doesn't make any sense, so it can only be literal here. Which means, what, he's having sex on a pile of gross smelly laundry? Or is he just hanging up his dirty boxers and it's dripping onto the floor? What does any of that have to do with slow hands? Swa -la -la -la. Drink. Swa -la -la -la. Jason Derulo, still sucking in 2017. Most of us won't do anything for as long as Jason Derulo has sucked. What about us? What about us? Pink really needs to hang it up at this point. I didn't know that I was starving till I tasted you. Haley Steinfeld got an Oscar nomination at age 14 bringing the Coen brothers' words to life. And now, she does this. Wow. The whole zoo. Oh baby, you don't just give me butterflies. You've got, like, rhinos in my stomach. You know what, I'm still not a huge fan of Ray Stremmerd, but I do at least appreciate them now. Enough that I'm offended on their behalf when some copycats show up jocking their style. I just wanna rolly, rolly, rolly with a dab of ranch. Don't dip your luxury watch in ranch dressing. Yuck. Yes, I know what it actually means. Don't at me. Alright, that's it for that. Now, finally, the worst song of the year. Let's do this. All time. Number one. Now, I know what you're asking. Wait. Look What You Made Me Do was not the worst song of the year? How? How is that possible? Well, it's complicated. Now, I always like to say that I rank the worst list based on what songs have the least good about them, not the most bad. But honestly, I go back and forth. Sometimes I think no taste is worse than bad taste. But this year I mostly ranked the really obnoxious songs as worse than the merely insipid or uninspired. But here's a thought. What if somehow someone managed to do both? What if someone released a song that was both unendurably irritating, yet somehow also flavorless and bland at the same time? Well guys, guess what? We got something that managed this remarkable feat, and it is my number one worst song of the year. Are you ready for it? Look, say what you want about Look What You Made Me Do. At least it provides psychological insight into Taylor Swift's deteriorating mental state. Ready For It is just as annoying, but it's still something very different. 
It's Taylor awkwardly wearing her pop diva costume, attempting to be Beyonce or Rihanna, and only ending up looking out of place and destroying whatever made her interesting to begin with. I hate the chorus of this song. I flat hate it. Anyone could have written it. That's the flavorless part of the song. The obnoxious part is the verses, where Taylor Swift raps, and dear god why didn't someone stop her. But if he's a ghost, then I can be a phantom. I can't even decide what the worst part is. Is it the lyrics? He can be my jailer, to the tailor. Ugh. Or is it the delivery? How this is gonna go, but he acts like such a man, so I see nothing better. Why, it's like Iggy Azalea never left us at all. Some, some boys are trying too hard. He don't try at all, though. Oh, the nerve of this chick. There is definitely someone trying too hard here, and it's not any boys. I don't know what she was thinking. Like, she sold sexy before. She can do sexy. This is not that. And you know what? A lot of people said I brought this on myself because of what I said about style. I will put up with a hundred bad bloods if it gets me just one more style. Yeah, well, here's my response. I said I'd put up with a hundred bad bloods. Not this. No, I was not ready for it. All I can say is, I can only hope new Taylor also gets killed soon by even newer Taylor, and that even newer Taylor is more listenable than this. <sighs> Peace.